subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you know when live we go hello and welcome to daily news simplified in the next half an hour i am going to take you through the most important articles from today's newspaper relevant for the civil service examination we are going to discuss today's newspaper the hindu delhi edition the articles we will be taking up for discussion has been tabulated on your screen the time stamping for the same has been given in the description section i hope you have been familiarizing yourself with different features of our e learning platform there's one specific thing i would like to tell you there's a tab of mains assignment questions and questions from current affair are being posted here apart from listening to dns what you should also try hand in hand is answer writing practice and these are the good questions to try your hands on so visit this tab look at some of the questions look at the answers read the answers write comments and write some of the answers on your own and sort comment from the peers and the reviewer here this news article has been taken from page number 4 recently governor's rule has been imposed in bodo land territorial area districts there are four such districts and together they come under bodo land territorial council a constitutional body constituted under the provisions of schedule 6 of the constitution the tenure for these bodies are 5 years recently the 5 year tenure of the present bodo land territorial council expired and since the elections cannot be conducted because of social distancing norms so the governor imposed governor's rule but there were demand from the local bodies that in the wake of covid 19 the tenure of bodoland territorial council should be extended by 6 month which the governor has right to do because in time of emergency like this local governance administration is important to function they will be more efficient and effective in dealing with issues like quarantine but no such demand was accepted and governor rule was imposed in the bodoland territorial area district This episode has once again highlighted the issues in administration of Schedule Six areas. Schedule Six has been making news repetitively for quite some time. In our discussion, we are going to take up Schedule Six, and we will also take up 125th Constitutional Amendment Bill that seeks to amend many provisions of Schedule Six. Article 244-2 mentions that. Schedule six shall apply to the administration of tribal areas in four states: Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram. Article two forty four one talks about fifth schedule. Article two forty four two talks about sixth schedule. You have to remember two terms. Generally, when we use the term scheduled areas, that means we are talking about administrative areas under fifth schedule, and the autonomous areas under sixth schedule are termed as tribal areas these tribal areas have much more autonomy than scheduled areas and this is going to be the focus of our discussion the reason why we have two different kind of autonomous scheduled areas fifth and sixth schedule although both are catering to tribal areas is because the tribal areas and the tribal population in northeastern india has been much more disconnected with rest of india throughout history and during the time of british because of norms introduced by them like restricted area permit and inner line permit their seclusion from rest of india further increased while in the rest of the tribal region the integration with the mainstream is more the integration with the mainstream population in these special tribal regions are very very minimal so a special provision is required to protect their customary laws and their way of life also making special provisions helps in conflict resolution and in developing a robust strong nationhood so with this background schedule 6 provision was added under indian constitution that gives autonomy to the tribal areas in these four states assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram they are termed as autonomous districts or autonomous region in case the entire district has been declared as area to be governed under the provision of schedule 6 that will be called as autonomous districts but sometimes only a part of a district can be declared as such an area then that will be called as autonomous region who will decide whether such an area has to be declared to be ruled under the provision of schedule 6 governor governor has very very important role to play in administration of schedule 6 region governor is also very powerful in this regard governor can declare a district as autonomous district 
or a part of the district as autonomous region. If governor feels that within a district there are many different ethnic groups, then governor can carve the district into different regions, declaring each region as autonomous regions. Governor can also dissolve the autonomous region. Governor can also merge more than one region into one bigger autonomous region. Governor can change the boundary, governor can change the name. Governor is very powerful in this regard. Now, in order for these regions to be autonomously governed, there has to be a governing body. That governing body is called as district council in case of an autonomous district. But if that's a smaller region within a district, that will be called as regional council. And each district council or regional council will be having 30 members. 26 of them will be directly elected and 4 of them will be nominated by the governor. But however, Bodoland Territorial Council, this has more number of members because as we have mentioned in the beginning, it has 4 districts within it. It has actually 46 members and this number is not important to remember but you have to know that in general the district councils have 30 members but Bodoland Territorial Council is an exception to that. The elected members hold office for a term of 5 years. That is the term of the council. The nominated members, however, hold office during the pleasure of the governor. And this ordinary term of 5 years of the district council can be increased under two conditions. Number one, if there is emergency imposed, then governor can extend the term of the council but not more than one year at a time and not more than six months after the emergency has been removed. But there is a second situation in which the governor can extend the tenure of the council and this is where the power of the governor has been increased considerably with regard to administration of these councils. If the governor feels that the situation is such that elections cannot be conducted, then also governor can extend the tenure of the council. And precisely because of this, it was demanded that governor extend the period of Bodoland Territorial Council. These district or regional councils are very powerful body. To draw a parallel, we can compare it with district panchayat, the Zilla Parishad, the first tier in the Panchayati Raj administration. And the striking difference between district panchayat and district council is that district councils have legislative power. Panchayats have administrative power. Panchayat also has some power to raise their own finances. In that sense, they have some financial power. They also have, in certain cases, judicial power. But what they do not have is the legislative power. They have to act upon the legislation of the state government and the parliament. But since these regions have been envisaged as autonomous region, an autonomy cannot come unless legislative power is given to these councils governing these regions. So district councils or the regional councils, they can make laws on important subjects like land, forest, irrigation, inheritance, marriage, divorce, adoption. And these laws are derived out of the social custom of the tribal population in these regions. And that is how the social customs, the way of life are protected. But all these legislation from the district council must have the assent of the governor. It must go through the governor. Just like in the state, the laws passed by the legislative assembly has to get the assent of the governor. Similarly here, the district councils are acting as a legislature and they have to get the assent of the governor. But the power equation is different. In state, the legislative assembly is a very powerful body and mostly the governor don't have option but to give the assent. But here, governor is very powerful. Governor can stop any legislation if and when he wants. So the district councils have legislative power. They also have administrative power. They can make regulations for control of money lending and trading by non-tribals. They can also raise their own revenue and impose certain taxes. They also have judicial power. If they want, they can create village councils or court of trials. But village councils here are not governing bodies. These are judicial bodies. However, High Court of the state will exercise jurisdiction over these judicial bodies. But how much and to what degree? That would be decided again by the governor. So as you can see, immense amount of power has been bestowed on these governing councils, the district or the regional council. But however, all the powers are rendered useless when they do not have financial autonomy. Although they have filed for some taxes and raised their own revenue, but that is not sufficient to conduct their own affairs. 
and mostly they are dependent on grants from the central government and the state government and the provision of the grant from the central government has been made under article 275 11a basically article 275 is the article concerning the provisions of grant in aids so two important articles you have to remember with regard to schedule 6 one is article 2442 and the other 275 11a one striking difference that we have seen from panchayat and municipal corporation is that these bodies have legislative power but parliament and state legislature also have their own legislations there has to be some mechanism to govern that which legislation will supersede whether the legislation of the parliament and the state legislature or the legislation of these councils the act of parliament or state legislature do not apply or apply with specified modifications and exceptions. And who is going to decide this? This is decided by president or the governor. In case of Assam, it lies with the governor, both in respect of acts of parliament and state legislature. But in case of Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram, the other three states under Schedule 6, it is decided by president in respect to acts of parliament and governor in respect to the acts of state legislature. There are 10 such councils under Schedule 6. Three of them are in Assam. One of that is Bodoland Territorial Council. And the news specific to this has come today. There are three more in Meghalaya, one in Tripura and three in Mizoram. Recently, National Commission on Scheduled Tribe has recommended that Ladakh, having high tribal population, should be brought under Schedule 6. But there has been no consideration yet on the recommendation. Now let us talk about 125th Constitutional Amendment Bill 2019. This has been brought in January last year. And this was brought in the background of huge protests that were going on in the northeastern region against Citizenship Amendment Bill. The purpose of this bill is to increase the financial and executive power of the 10 existing autonomous councils in the 6th Schedule. The bill seeks to make important changes in the provisions of Schedule 6. The first and foremost, the bill seeks to establish elected village and municipal councils as subordinate bodies under district councils to further the devolution of power and to reach to the grassroots level. As we have discussed previously, that these councils can be compared to the district panchayat or the Zilla Parishad. But below Zilla Parishad, there are two levels of governance. At the middle level, there is Panchayat Samiti and at the lowest grassroots level, there is Gram Panchayat. But below the district councils, there are no tier of governance. And to make these autonomous councils really democratic and empowering, provision to establish elected village and municipal councils has been made in the bill. And these village councils will be given the power for economic development and social justice, as has been given to panchayat, for example, planning, implementation of land reforms, minor irrigation, water management, animal husbandry, social forestry, the similar kind of power that already the panchayat at the lower level enjoys. The power to the lower level of governance will come at the cost of the district councils. So to compensate for that, the bill has provision to transfer more subjects from the state government to the autonomous district councils. For instance, subject like land, public works, food and civil supplies and tourism. So more power is going to come from the state to district council and power is going to go from district council to the village council. The bill has another important provision with reference to finance. As we have seen that these councils do not have self-sustaining finance to conduct their affair and they are mostly dependent on grants. But the bill has recommended that finance commission will recommend devolution of financial resources to these autonomous councils. So far there is no such provision and they are dependent on grants but this will make them really financially autonomous. The third important provision in the bill is regarding reservation of one third of the seats in the village and municipal councils for women. And this is even more important in the background of many of the tribal community in these regions being matrilineal. So such reservation policy is much more suited there. There is a fourth important provision in the bill that state election commission shall conduct the elections to these autonomous councils. So far, election has been conducted by state election commissions, but other bodies as well. For example, in Meghalaya, the district council affairs department. This conducts election to the three district councils in the state. 
Apart from the provision of this bill, you must also know that Citizenship Amendment Act itself has a provision that the Act will not be applicable to the Tribal Councils under Schedule 6. So people who will be accepted as citizens after the enactment of Citizenship Amendment Bill and under its provision, they will not have any land or trading rights in these autonomous regions. So that will further ensure the protection to tribal communities in these regions. There is a small news article on page number 8. As such, there is not much to analyze and understand, but it's quite interesting. So I'm bringing this to your notice. There was a RTI file seeking answer from election commission as to what will be the electoral college for presidential election, whether that will include Jammu and Kashmir or not. And the answer that has come from Election Commission is to refer Article 54. Now let me take you through Article 54 and then you will understand why this RTI was filed. Article 54 says that the president shall be elected by member of an electoral college. Electoral college basically is set of people chosen to elect a candidate. An electoral college for presidential election will be consisting of the elected members of both houses of the parliament the elected members of the legislative assemblies of the states. And there is a clarification given that states here will include National Capital Territory of Delhi and Union Territory of Puducherry because both of them have their own legislature. Now the question is that in this clarification there is no mention of Jammu and Kashmir. And Jammu and Kashmir is now a Union Territory and that is also having legislature of its own. So by extension that should also be included. But the legislation that created Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir did not have any mention whether that will be included in the Electoral College for presidential election or not. So there is a technical problem now. And a thinking mind, a student like you, filed this RTI, but the answer coming from Election Commission is not very satisfactory. But this is not much of an issue. The explanation under Article 54 can be extended by a notification by Government of India. There is an interview on page number 7. Should Government intervene in platform publisher relationship? Platform here refers to the news aggregators like Google, InShort, Facebook and publishers are the news publishers. This issue has been around since more than a year now. And news companies, the publishers, they have been complaining about unfair use of their news by the news aggregators. If you go to the news aggregator site like InShorts, there you can see news very crisply presented to you, around 60 words. Below the news, you can see the credit given and the link to the original news as well. For example, you can see this news regarding Irfan Khan has been taken up from the Quint and then from Z News, the Financial Express link from who but the point is that most of the readers will not be going to the link because that's defeating the purpose of reading the news in short so they will quickly glance through the news from this website and not go to the original news publishers platform so what effectively has happened they have created money out of thin air these news are not theirs but still they are selling it and this is hurting the revenue generation of the news publishers and this issue has come to the fore again because Australia and France has taken significant step to make news aggregators pay for reuse of the news. Competition regulator in France has pushed Google to get into negotiation for a remuneration deal with publishers. So on a regular basis these news aggregators have to pay to the publishers. Another model has come up in Australia. Australia has proposed to make these platforms pay for use of news. Meaning as and when these aggregators will use news from the publishers, they have to pay them. Although nothing concrete has been done, negotiation in the case of France is going on and Australia's proposal has not fructified yet. But still the discussion has taken up the steam and concrete measures coming out of it will benefit the news publishers who for years were struggling to make digital transition. But now these digital platforms have come up and that has taken away the opportunity from these news publishers to go digital. Perhaps in few years, a global standard will be set on the remunerative relation between news aggregators and news publishers. And this is the time actually to discuss this 
and in this context this question has been raised should government intervene in the platform publisher relationship and if it should to what degree for the mains exam you must open up the dimension of this issue what is the issue involved in news aggregation first and foremost the question is on independent journalism you must have seen changes in the hindu they have raised their prices substantially they also have restricted the number of articles you can read free of cost on their web page they are finding it difficult to generate revenue to sustain themselves and when their sustenance is becoming difficult if news aggregators eat up into their revenue it will be impossible for them to survive so this is serious this is a serious issue news aggregators are challenging independent journalism right to freedom of expression is closely related with freedom of press and independent journalism this is the most important dimension you have to touch upon in the answers then you must understand there is asymmetric relationship between the platform and the publishers these platforms these news aggregators these are giants and any publisher cannot even imagine getting into negotiation with giants like google without government intervention so now from gs paper 3 perspective you can highlight the importance of competition you can highlight the importance of stopping monopoly and because of monopoly what is happening is news publishers want to have an association with platforms like news aggregators they do not want their articles to be banned from being published on these news aggregators platform because the popularity is so high the user traffic is so large on these platforms that anyone will like to be associated with despite getting poorly paid by these aggregators then there is big question on government intervention see news publishers and news companies needs to be protected we understand it's important it's important for freedom of press it's important for independent journalism it is related to fundamental right to freedom and expression but in doing so you should not punish innovation you should not punish success you should not unnecessarily punish and chase away these news aggregators these online platforms and these giants like google you can't simply ask google to leave your country you can't ask facebook to leave your country they have become reality and they are going to stay so government intervention must really be balanced they should not outrightly be banned but they must be forced to get into a negotiation to finalize some kind of remunerative agreement so it must be regulated rather than restricted australia and france already has set the ball rolling now it is the turn of developing countries like india china brazil to take up the issue and go on a similar line like france and australia because if major economies have set the precedents then by default all over the world such a remunerative structure will start working now let's do the prelims summary Here we'll also take two smaller news, which will be important for the prelims exam. Leukemia, beloved and illustrious actor Rishi Kapoor has died due to leukemia. Very briefly, let's see what leukemia is. Leukemia is kind of blood cancer. Leukemia is kind of blood cancer. What is cancer? Cancer is uncontrolled growth of the cells, and that results into damage of body tissues. Since it's a blood cancer. so it must be related to uncontrolled growth of blood cells and exactly it is related with leukocytes leukocytes also called as white blood cells so leukemia is basically uncontrolled growth of leukocytes or white blood cells ultimately resulting in damage of body tissues when there is uncontrolled growth of wbc two things happen one is the cells the wbc the leukocytes they are not fully grown so they cannot perform the function of normal fully grown wbc so the wbc function is hindered apart from that they also crowd out red blood cells and the blood platelets so essentially we have too many wbc which are actually not performing the function of wbc and rbc and platelets are also diminished so in essence none of the function of wbc rbc and platelets will be performed so you would understand the symptoms would be bleeding because there are few blood platelets so blood clotting will be affected you will feel tired because there are few rbc to carry oxygen to various part of the cell you will also be at higher risk of infection because wbc although too many in numbers but not fully developed so will not be performing its duty and because of these conditions you may have fever 
and ultimately when the number of wbc grows too high then that will start to affect the body tissues and will result in organ failures the exact cause of leukemia is not known although it is considered that there is a mix of both genetic factors and environmental factors if there is a history of leukemia in family there is a high chance that offsprings will have it and there are some risk factors for example smoking exposure to some radiations or some carcinogenic chemicals like benzene will also increase the risk in today's newspaper there is a news that chuck how which is a black rice variety from manipur and gork and gorakhpur terracotta they have bagged geographical indication tag chuck how is a special variety of rice from manipur which is scented it has very special aroma and it is called as glutinous rice gluten you understand is a protein to be found in wheat so gluten is a form of protein rice does not have protein it has starch so although it is called as glutinous rice but you would understand from the basic that it will not have gluten gluten is gives sticky nature to the wheat and it keeps the food together and chak how the black variety of rice is more sticky than the brown or the white rice and because of that it is named as glutinous but gluten is not to be found in this the sticky nature actually comes from amylose and amylopectin which are obviously form of a starch and starch are found in rice chak how this variety of rice has been traditionally used in medicine it also has very high crude fiber content and because of that it takes longer time to get cooked and this longer time actually becomes a striking feature of this rice from which the original species of rice can be identified today we saw some important constitutional articles for instance in the context of district and regional council we saw that article 2442 says that provision of six schedule shall apply to administration of tribal areas in the state of assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram so six schedule is applicable in these four states as per the clause 2 of article 244 We also saw that there is problem of finance, and presently the autonomous councils they are dependent on grants in aid. And Article Two Seventy Five One One A deals with grants in aids to these autonomous councils. Basically, Article Two Seventy Five deals with grants in aids. We also saw that Election Commission has asked to read Article Fifty Four to understand the Electoral College for election of president in response to a query that was filed through RTI. An article 54 says that the electoral college for presidential election will include all the elected members of both the houses and elected members of the legislative assemblies of the states and state for this matter will also include Delhi and Puducherry because these are the union territories with legislative assemblies but the question is Jammu and Kashmir also now is union territory and it also has legislative assembly so will it be considered here or not that will be answered by union government in due course of time now question of the day first let's discuss yesterday's question of the day consider the following statements about the united nation united nations allows mechanism of negotiations and arbitration only for the purpose of establishment of peace which is incorrect because it does have the mechanism of force and that is included in chapter 7 of the united nations charter which deals with establishment of peace and it's mentioned there that use of force sanctioned by united nation is permitted and second statement is correct because chapter 7 of united nation charter deals with the mechanism of establishing peace all the members of security council enjoy veto power which is incorrect because only the permanent member the p5 members enjoy the veto power which of the following statements given above is are incorrect so the incorrect ones are one and third so the answer would be option a the question for today is which of the following are included in the electoral college for presidential election please pardon this the elected members of both houses of parliament the elected members of legislative assemblies of the state the elected members of legislative council of the state the elected members of legislative assemblies of union territories of delhi and puducherry one only one and two only one two and four only or all of the above with this we have come to the end of the discussion for today and in order to grasp how much you have understood you should attempt the dns quiz and yes in the pdf i have tried to add most of the things that i have spoken over and above what was already appearing on your screen thank you for being with me see you next time goodbye take care